Hello, brothers and sisters. Thank you again for this awesome privilege of sharing God's word. And I want to say how I deeply, deeply miss being with you. I was so looking forward to this Sunday when we'd be back in person again. But I, I really prayed over this and a commitment we made to our three-year-old uh, grandson's birthday party also on Sunday. I'm, you know, I think it's probably best that we do this by video and I not disappoint our uh, three-year-old grandson. Um, so uh, bear with me. I want to share from my heart, share something uh, very important in part what, you know, what drives, what uh, holds together our family and your family and your friendships and my friendships and and um, uh, the mystery, the deep mystery, the deep meaning of Passion Week and Resurrection Sunday, and especially in a, in a way, Good Friday that uh, links it all together. God's amazing love for us. And the Bible has a lot to say about love from beginning to end. And uh, one of the chapters that's probably most quoted about love is 1 Corinthians 13. So that's our scripture reading, background reading, really foundational reading for today. And it's um, probably the most quoted text on love um, of all texts. And it's at the same time probably the most uh, recited uh, passage or portions of it uh, in uh, weddings or wedding anniversaries. And uh, it's just an amazing, amazing uh, pastor, a passage. We, we, you know, we think of the Apostle Paul as a gifted theologian, a remarkable evangelist, but uh, clearly he had a, a touch for poetry in the deep sense of spiritual poetry, words that ring true in our minds, our hearts, our souls, our guts, uh, to really uh, refocus on what matters. So why love matters, how love matters is a topic for just a, a few minutes to kind of open the door and, and ho hope you will uh, re-meditate on these passages, uh, re-engage these passages, uh, and perhaps some of these ideas will help. And what I'd like to do is focus especially on verses uh, four through eight and Throughout uh, this chapter, love is treated as as, as almost a, a, another person. Um, you know, love has this character. Love does this. Uh, love doesn't do that. Um, and, and so we, we talk maybe about two people in love, and yet love is, is active as a third party that brings them together. And I've had a, a long, deep belief that that love is always triangular. And you talk about a love triangle, you talk about trouble, someone committing adultery, someone uh, breaking marriage vows uh, be with someone else. So there's a love triangle. But that's only because there's really a love triangle in that what draws two people together is this third factor, this amazing uh gravitational force, this amazing supernatural uh, reality of love that that can really hold together a love relationship for, for days, for weeks, for months, for years, for decades. And uh, Vicky and I have certainly grown in love over the decades. And I look forward to even more and more uh, growth in love because love is is God. Love is the presence of the supernatural that that makes our our, our human commitments are real. Those vows uh, we say it, as couples to be married are are really profoundly deep and 
all-consuming vows, but uh, most importantly, even just a wonderful friendships that, that endure and how when uh, one suffers, the others suffer. In, in this COVID time, for example, I, I've had some uh, very uh, dear, beloved uh, friends uh, that have, have suffered, have suffered dearly, and, and some have died, including one of my best friends uh, died just a week ago, and uh, we are all uh, grieving his loss. So I'm, I'm uh, urging you to rediscover love and understand how love matters. Look at these verses four through uh, just the beginning of eight. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not want uh, what belongs to others. You know, it doesn't really envy. It always protects. It always trusts. Uh, it, it always hopes. I'm, I'm jumping uh, there to uh, verse seven. Uh, it, it never gives up. Love never fails. Just an amazing qualities of love there in, in four and then jumping to uh, seven and eight. And I encourage you to meditate on each of these. Years ago, I, I was uh, appointed as a pastor of a, a church in a, a very racially charged part of Virginia. We've talked about that before. Uh, but one thing I, that really kind of happened that, that was really beyond my understanding at first, but, uh, but you know, God, who is love, uh, makes things happen that help shape and deepen uh, love relationships. So uh, shortly after Vicki and I moved into the special house, the parsonage for the church, and I, I, I got this phone call from one of the members of the church uh, saying she'd like me to ride with her. Uh, her husband just had a heart attack and was in a hospital in Richmond where he was doing some work, and, um, and, and she'd like me to come and pray over her uh, husband, and it was an opportunity to uh, get to know each other as well. She, this woman was uh, old enough to be my mother, at, at least, and I uh, was uh, encouraged. I just thought, wow, what an idea to get to know one of the uh, important people in the church, many, 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 many important people. But uh, uh, so as, we, uh, as she drove down, she spent the whole hour going from where we live to uh, to Richmond to a whole hour cataloging all the different ways the church was wonderful and it was almost like we don't really need a pastor uh, everything is good uh, don't touch it don't don't affect anything I'm thinking you know God help me I don't know what I'm supposed to say but she give gave me no opportunity to say anything she just talked totally constantly for that hour. We had a wonderful time with her husband, reading some scripture, praying earnestly. He was moved. We had a great uh, encouragement time. And, and as it turns out, just a day or two later, he was able to leave the hospital. It was a remarkable recovery. We thank God for answered prayer. Prayer does work. But back back to that that afternoon, we went down and and then we're coming back in early evening, and and she's saying nothing, and I I just said it's my role to say something, so I affirmed everything she said. I said I I love the people, I love the, the attitudes of so many people. Mentioned some things, conversations, in just a few days that we'd been there, just mentioned some things to just to show her I really meant that, and and then I said now the challenge is to bring that same love, that same attitude, that same positive uh, uh, human concern, positive godly concern to the people around us. So it's not just within the church or not primarily within the church uh, in, in a way that, that blocks out other people, but be a transformative agent for the community. And, and I talked for an hour also on the way back, and she didn't respond to anything. So I didn't know really what had happened, but, you know, whether it was effective uh, comment or not. But in fact, 
she started agreeing with me. She said, you know, that is something. If, if love is real within the relationships of the church, there ought to be you know, much more engagement, especially with the young people. There were no young people in the church. Um, so we've got to reach out to this younger generation, uh, the you know, young adults, the young parents, uh, the teenagers. Um, we got to reach out. And, and so she, she did agree at the, the very couple, last couple of months. She said, and, and of course, our community needs love. The whole community needs love. There's a lot of problems. So I wouldn't go into the details, but we both understood, I think, that, they, that these issues uh, were big and were important for the church to see as a priority. Well, I, I, I can't have time now to give you the details, but this woman became a major, major change agent within the church and within the community uh, uh, to really overcome racism, to overcome misunderstandings, overcome some injustices. And and I, I, I think, because uh, other people would say to me, do you understand how racist she is? And I said, no, I don't see it. I just don't see it. Because we nipped it in that wonderful one hour about all the love in the church going down to Richmond, one hour with my positively sharing how that great love could even have measurable effects in the community. So love matters. And it is triangular, again, as I said before. And triangles are strong. You, you could even think of the parable of a, of a building. Uh, we think often of just the uh, uh, building, how many floors, how many stories a building has. And, and we think of one floor on top of the other and pillars that hold it up. But that's all we had. The building would collapse easily. There have to be those cross pieces that, that give the building strength. Triangles have strength that rectangles don't have. And uh, so every building ultimately is has triangles, the cross pieces, cross beams that, that keep everything stable, whether it's a two-story building or a hundred-story building. So uh, triangles are crucial. And in our relationships, two people are wonderful. But when God is part of that relationship, the relationship is deeper, the, the relationship really matters, the relationship really benefits both sides. It's not a matter of keeping score, but it's a matter of growing in God while we grow to one another as we become more more in tune with love, because God is love. So I, I, there are three things I'd like to accomplish in these next few minutes. One is to talk about how to receive the abundant, amazing grace of the love of God. And then secondly, how to relish it, to really grow in it, to, to be thrilled, to appreciate, to savor, to really savor to really appreciate the love of God, to, to mature in the love of God. And then third, how to ravish, ravish that love on others, you know, within the church, outside the church, within the family, that's a priority, within each personal family, each of our oh, wonderful uh, families that, that are uh, part of our church and, and, and people beyond so that we're Ra ravishing that love, just pouring it out, because love is infinite, and we can pour out love, and as we pour it out, we ourselves grow in love. So to receive the love of God, to receive it, to relish it, and to ravish others with it. And how to receive the love of God? Uh, one, the one and only way, really, is to grow into Jesus Christ grace-filled calling for you. He, he reaches out to you. And the, the key points in verses 7 and 8 come out strongly uh, because he protects, um, he grows us in faith and hope and perseveres and his love never ends. He protects. You know, there's a special love 
word. You know, the ancient languages mostly did not have a word for sacrificial, devoted, come what may, love. That we call agape love, and in Hebrew is, is ahav love. It's easy to remember because it's like, I have ahav love. Um, and and uh, basically, there had to be a, a word invented in Greek to be able to translate the Old Testament words for love, this amazing, sacrificial, devoted, come what may, love that God has for us and that God desires for us to have to him and to have for one another. You know, love your neighbor as yourself is agape in the ancient Greek text of the Old Testament, translated into Greek. 200 years before Jesus, the word is ahav in the Hebrew. Love your neighbor as yourself. The, the love of husband and wife in uh, Song of Songs, for example, love that, that amazing uh, power, that fire of God, that is the passion of love, a, a, a great Bible text to understand how uh, deep and how transformative uh, love is. So the first, how to receive it, respond to his calling, because his love protects us. You know, it's, it is eternal love. It is a unique kind of sacrificial love shown dramatically on Good Friday in, in God's love for us. And notice how uh, tr trust and hopes, love trusts and hopes as a model and, and as the last verse of uh, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about faith, hope, and love, these, these three things last forever. And the greatest is love. But yet, faith and hope matter. And both of them appear here in verse 7. To trust or to have faith is the same, exactly the same word. And, and uh, God trusts us with his love. God trusts us with his grace to forgive us. So we could be transformed. He entrusts us, desires us to be transformed by his grace, by his forgiveness, by his liberation that, that he won for us, that he paid for us on uh, the cross of Calvary. And hope to give purpose, to, to have a, a, a deeper future. I think for, for that um, uh, woman, that uh, uh, wife of the man with a heart attack, and in her case, I think it was just a remarkable uh, expansion of her sense of hope, what the church could accomplish. And she bought into it. She felt God in that vision that I cast for her on, on the way back from Richmond to where we were, where we live. And it perseveres, you know, to, to teach love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh, Deuteronomy says, and teach this to your children. So it's it's got to persevere. We have to be intentional about persevering that love so that we can all receive the abundant, amazing grace. And then it never ends. The love never fails, as in the first uh, uh, couple words there of, of uh, verse 8. So we receive by responding to God's calling through his actions, especially in dying for our sins and conquering uh, death itself. And so we go to Jesus, go to Jesus. But secondly, we need to relish, relish the grace of God within ourselves to really focus on its value, how it really does matter to really release the power of love to help us to grow in, uh, in character, Respond to Jesus' calling. We grow in his character as we become people that have the same commitment to love because we are committed to Jesus, because Jesus' life matters so much in our lives to, to give us hope, to give us faith. Yes, so we relish, relish that grace of the love of God uh, within us and we grow, therefore, in character to be more like Jesus. We grow in Jesus. Go to Jesus to receive the love. Grow in Jesus to relish uh, his love 
and to develop a character like Jesus so we can have the eternal values. We can be reunited into God's family, have the joy of the Lord, the joy of our Lord, which is in a deep way, our strength to endure, to uh, continue to love. And notice how this protects us. Love covers a multitude of sins. When we love, when we have God's love, it's, it's part of the washing of sins. We can walk with the Lord in, in, the, in his light and, and grow and have our, have our sins forgiven, have our sins cleansed. Uh, we can be honest in confessing to him and, and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It protects us. It covers. Our love covers the, the things um, that we've messed up on because it's the love that represents God's presence within us that transforms us. And, and we trust or we grow in faith as we love more deeply, more in the character of Jesus. As we grow in Jesus, we relish that love and we become more faithful to God and more trusting in God. Then we really have a deep hope, an awareness of, of the positive future that, that God has for us. And love perseveres. Yes, to, to love unconditionally perseveres. The strong love of Jesus is our partner uh, to, to love our children, to love you know, love people that are not very lovely, but we want to represent Jesus in all that we do. And um, and it never ends. It's really the theme, can be the theme of our lives as Jesus' presence himself in our lives uh, is our theme, is what makes us really who we are as he created us in the first place and as he redeems us to be more and more like our Heavenly Father, more and more uh, compassionate and and caring and forgiving and helping. So we receive the love of Christ by by saying yes to his call on our lives. We, we become believers or baptized into the family of God and we continue to go to Jesus uh, uh, to receive his love. We learn to relish his love, our second point, using the same principles here of protection and faith and hope and perseverance and never ending. We relish, relish that love and, and we grow therefore in character. We grow in uh, the character of Christ within us. We grow in Jesus. So we have the relishing through character, our character being uh, improved upon and being stronger and being more the sweet aroma of uh, Jesus Christ into our world, the light of the world that Jesus is. We become uh, representatives of that light as well. And then third, to ravish, to ravish others with that love, to find ways to go beyond the, the usual traditional family ties or friendship ties, um, but, but to really show compassion, to reach out to others, and, and especially even, even, but especially also the unlovely, the ones that, that, um, that, that people tend to avoid, to, to ravish God's love, God's grace. And, and therefore, it has to be in our conduct. It's not just in our character, where we got Jesus inside us. We, we don't just keep Jesus locked up inside our hearts. We let him out through our character. Yes, through our conduct, because character has to be shown in conduct. If he's really in our hearts, then our conduct will be God-honoring. Conduct will be uh, a holy uh, conduct. And we give to Jesus the good we do to other people, for other people, to benefit other people, the, the close ones in our families and friendships and, 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 and even others that, that God um, allows us to, uh, to help, to benefit, to encourage um, in that uh, conduct. Uh, we are giving to Jesus. 
So we start by going to Jesus, we grow in Jesus, and then we give to Jesus. Jesus says, as much as you've done good things to even the least of the brothers and sisters around you, the least of your, your fellow humans, even to the least, even the ones that you, you've done good to, good for, uh, good to benefit these others that are the least, however you define that, least lovely or ones that have the least social status, least importance. You're not just investing in your own career future. You're looking out for other people as well that cannot pay you back. Then it's giving to Jesus. And there again, it protects us because the blessings we share with others, uh, uh, God has promised to return back to us as well in this life or the next or both. And, and to grow in faith, to really trust God as we help those in need, to, to really build up our, our, our uh, uh, positive orientation toward hope, uh, as, as in uh, verse 7 there, to persevere, even when uh, discouraged, to persevere. And, and people will notice, uh, and God, more importantly, by far, God will notice, even if no one else does and then to endure in that. Um, because, you know, these three things last. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest, the ones that, the one that really most profoundly endures on earth and in heaven is love. It's the greatest force for change. And we've seen that in uh, wonderful examples. Example of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Example of uh, Mary Nelson in Chicago. Uh, example of uh, a, a, a Swede, African-American change agent called Ruth Bentley, the first black person ever to get a PhD in all of Alabama's history. And she devoted her life to benefit people, to help people, uh, and you know didn't get rich, but was an amazing change agent uh, 87 years old, and I was thrilled to be uh, part of her birthday party because I worked with her and, and was a, a helping to multiply uh, the uh, awesome Jesus orientation that she, uh, Ruth Bentley, had. So, hey, answer Jesus' calling, and you receive the love. Grow in Jesus, in the character of Jesus, uh, in you by, uh, by you know, looking for every uh, piece of wisdom from the Lord, and and uh, continue to uh, give to Jesus yourself, your redeemed self, your lovely product of God's creative work, and and to give your best as. Uh, he continues to grow in you, to empower you, uh, to give you success in the work that he wants you to do in professional terms, in de finishing degrees, in getting promotions, yes, um, but, but not by being a, a syrupy, uh, <laughs> just overly sweet, um, superficial, no, no, no by being a, a strong person of integrity, of the, the love that drives excellence and integrity, the love of God that the Lord wants to make perfect within us to become more and more excellent representatives of Jesus' amazing love and power shown on the cross in Good Friday, coming up soon, and shown in the power of the resurrection, giving hope and, and joy and fulfillment in, in all things godly. May the Lord continue to guide you to receive, continue to receive, to uh, relish his love, to really treasure his love and grow in his character by growing in Jesus, and to ravish his love on others, starting within our own connections that are already there 
and, and looking for other opportunities. May the Lord bless you and keep you in every way. In Jesus' name.